Can the Bamboo AMS be upgraded? Can it be made even better than the AMS 2 Pro? Well, a little company called Ibos believes so. I reached out to them and they managed to send me one of their earlier bird units to check out and give my honest feedback about. Today we'll be installing their Tetris X drying system onto the Bamboo AMS 1, adding active, independent filament drying for all four rolls. We'll be following the instructions for this. It looks pretty complicated, but ends up being pretty straightforward. The box includes the only tool you'll need, along with extra screws just in case you lose one or two. The first step is removing the acrylic lid from the AMS. This is held in by four screws that are accessible from underneath the unit. Using the just long enough 2mm driver they included, you can remove the screws that are recessed in the rear. The driver is magnetic too, so no flying screws when they come out. There are two screws on either side holding the hinges. Next, we'll place the new Tetris X acrylic lid in its place, being careful to line up the new hinges which need to fit comfortably in the slots. The lid is already equipped with the heaters and blowers. The lid needs to be screwed in. Because of the heaters, it doesn't like to stay closed when tilted on its side, so be sure to hold it securely until you can get the screws started. You won't be using the same AMS screws, but the ones included with the Tetris. Don't over tighten these, just screw them in until you feel some resistance. Flipping the unit over completely and looking at the back rear of it, you'll find some holes already in the AMS. I guess Bamboo thought ahead and left room for accessories, but never quite released them. Thankfully, Ibo saw this as a design advantage to exploit. These leg cable guide combo pieces line up with the screw holes, leaving the cable management side facing outward. Each leg is secured by two screws. Again, be careful not to over tighten as these screws create their own threading in the plastic. Once this is done for all four corners, with the routing clips facing outward towards the sides, it's time to line up some cables. The Tetris includes four of these 1-2 to two USB splitter cables. These will provide power from the main power supply to the screens at the front, as well as allow those screens to control their respective heaters. The two outer ones have the thicker USB-C cables running through the cable guides, while the thinner, shorter end runs to the back center of the device where the power supply will go. Logically, the next step is the power supply. This has four C8 power cables labeled A, B, C, and D, opposite of the four USB-C connectors labeled with the same letters. These will allow the screens to control the power going to the heaters. You can connect these in any order, but I went ahead and plugged in the USB-C connectors first, making it easier for myself while making this video. Then the power supply is placed over the two rear legs. It has cutouts that align to sit flush with the body of the AMS. While I'm here, I'm going to connect these C8 cables to their respective C7 inlets. These are commonly called figure eight connectors. Now using the included screws, the power supply is screwed into the feet. Before you screw it down, make sure the two outer cables are routed in their clips correctly. Next up, the control screens. These fit over the front legs in the same way that the power supply fit over the rear. You'll notice in this clip that I failed to properly route the cable on the right side. No worries, I got that fixed off camera later, just make sure you have them lined up properly. Six more of those screws, three for each side, and we're almost ready to get this up and running. The last step while we have the unit upside down is to place these eight rubberized feet underneath to keep it from sliding around on top of the table or printer. The manual shows some suggested locations, but it looks like the inner four feet are dealer's choice for placement. Let's flip this over and get started on the inner chamber. The Tetris includes several acrylic pieces that will separate the four filament slots. I guess I won't need these silica beads anymore, and I certainly won't miss having to recharge them. The next step was slightly confusing, and the subsequent steps explain things. Included are four acrylic baffles labeled A, B, B, and C. This is because the internal layout of the AMS is not perfectly symmetrical. The four clips attach to these panels. You want the beveled edge of the acrylic to be facing away from the clip, and you'll see why once we set these inside. I found it to be much easier to attach the clip first rather than placing the individual pieces inside. These should be inserted straight down so that the bottom of the black clip can attach in front of the feeder with the acrylic resting just above it. Then it will get pushed forward at an angle sealing the front part of the AMS. These can take a little pressure to push into place, but they should fit almost flush with the feeder when done. I'll do these one by one, following the A, B, B, C order. On this last one, I'll zoom in and turn up the light a little bit so you can see a little better how the black clip attaches to in the inside. 
and then is pushed back to be flush against the front of the AMS. Next up are these little hats that fit on the posts of the inner chamber. The shorter ones go on the left and right, while the center one uses the longer cap. These are pressure fit and should line themselves up when you push them down. There are also three identical mini clips that fit in front of the rear rollers. One side has a thinner slot, and this is the one that attaches to the factory plastic. All of these just help align things in the next step. Now, the three large acrylic blades. One of these is not like the others, and it's the one that fits in the center slot. This helps to divide the filament slots when the lid is closed, and they'll line up with the ones that are already molded into the lid. These are again kind of pressure fit, but when pushing down you should feel a satisfying clipping sound and feeling as the back is pushed down. The last step here is to place these acrylic dovetail plates into the back side. This helps keep the dividers in place as well as blocking off the holes at the back. Remember that the middle one will need to be removed if you need to disconnect or change the Bowden tube running out of the AMS. With that, it's complete. There's just one last extra thing I'd like to do, and, and maybe this is a small suggestion to IBOS. The backside is a bit messy with eight cables, and I love organizing wires. I'm going to use some of this plastic shielding stuff to wrap these cables together and keep them a bit more organized. This is totally optional, and it didn't come with it, but I want to keep the cables protected when I put this device to work. Finally, it's time to set my modified AMS back on its throne atop the P1S and connect the extra power cable to an outlet. This is awesome. Each chamber has its own independent heating and fan control. You can dry one at a time, two at a time, three, or all four. You can also cycle it to a passive mode where it just monitors the humidity and vents air as needed. I'm going to see how efficient this can be by loading it with a roll of TPU for AMS, some glow-in-the-dark PLA, a glittery PETG, and some matte PLA. All have been sitting on the open for a few weeks. Since each chamber is independent, I can assign the filament type for each using the presets, or even make a custom one. Each heater has its own motorized vent that opens when drying and then closes when drying is complete. There's a manual lower method in the manual just in case you lose power during drying. It also has a humidity mode where it will automatically turn itself on and begin drying if the internal humidity exceeds a set level. The heaters work quickly and quietly, and the internal humidity quickly fell below 20%. There's also a two-stage drying mode meant for drying while printing. Overall, this is a massive improvement to the AMS, adds another layer of automation, and replaces the need for a filament dryer. So far, I've been able to dry even the most forgotten filaments I own, like skin color and silk turquoise. Seriously, what was I thinking when I got those? Do you think this is a must-have upgrade? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see even more videos on 3D printing or maybe how to fix your phone. Want to see your name 3D printed in every one of my videos? Become a channel member or patron today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.